Okay, hi everybody. My name's Andy Anderson and I'm with Kubesteller. Uh, just by show of hands, how many of you out there are managing or using multiple clusters simultaneously on a daily basis? Yeah, that's a, that's a few of you. Okay, so I'm from IBM Research. I'm a software architect and I'm one of the chairs of the Kubesteller project. So. Are you tired of adding your clusters to every management console you use? Are you restless because you can't get your workload to scale vertically or horizontally? Do you need to clone yourself just to keep up with all the configuration variations and resource bundling tasks on your plate? All that frustration can make you cry. You need new and improved Kubesteller. With Kubesteller, you can satisfy all your multi-cluster configuration management needs. Deploy configuration to any cluster on any cloud. Hybrid, multi, edge, etc. Scale effortlessly. Centralize your inventory. Customize resources in easily defined groups. Act on status in summarized groups instead of one by one. Let automation tools do their job and return the responsibility of scale to the platform. Preserve direct compatibility with cloud-native projects using common and unbundled Kubernetes resources. Warning, use Kubesteller only as directed. Remember to exercise unabandoned joy as Kubesteller may cause feelings of relaxation, elation, and occasional outbursts of laughter. Running Kubesteller with your choice of Kubernetes distribution and your favorite cloud-native projects may lead to periods of increased productivity and improved operations. Did you all like that? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as was mentioned in the video, you can, with Kubesteller you can centrally define and deploy your workload centrally. So, and you can use standard deployment tools, that's Kubectl, Helm, Argo CD, all of the above, without bundling those resources. So that's important for a lot of people. You want to see what's in, uh, not in a bundle, but in those separate resources you've got maybe in a GitHub somewhere. You're making disconnected operations possible. So with, you know, with a standard Kubernetes cluster, 40 seconds, your node's marked unschedulable if it's not uh, connected directly back to your hub. So with Kubesteller, we, don't, we can tolerate those long disconnection periods. And we're designed for scalability, one-to-many and many-to-one scenarios are covered, and it's modular, so we work with any CNCF project that's out there. So I kind of like this. I show this a lot, it gets people, I know it's an oldie, but it's a goodie, right? So yeah, what did we do? We put a control plane inside a control plane. Standard Kubernetes uses about anywhere from two to 300 API resources. What we did is we stripped that down to about 40 basic Kubernetes resources. So what that means, I deploy a workload, it doesn't blow up into a pod. I deploy a job, it doesn't go down to pod. That's in the hub. When it gets deployed to the remote cluster though, that's when it unfurls and becomes a real job or a proper workload. So we did this by denaturing the workloads and essentially because the APIs for, for jobs and for pods don't exist, right? How many of you in here have see, heard vCluster? Okay, so imagine with vCluster, you, what you can do is you can modify and say, I don't want these APIs to be available for the cluster that I'm about to deploy. So we deploy a cluster inside of a cluster. Yeah, you got it. It takes a minute to get around, but once you understand the concept, basically you're running a cluster as a group of pods inside of another cluster. All right, anybody know what this is? <laughs> Venn diagram, what was that over there? Okay, so here's how it basically works. In Kubesteller, we have inventory workloads and binding policies. So you, you register your clusters as inventory, you deploy your workloads, your regular kubectl API, but you're only doing it once, not three times here, right? And then you set up your binding policy. You say, I want this particular app on this particular cluster, and away we go. You do that over and over again. That's preset, and you never have to do that again. Some of our uh, showcased integrations here, the software-defined farm that we're working with Cornell, there is some aspect of that with NASA, with getting imagery and so forth about the agriculture of the future, and we're also working with Q. You know, if you're not AI, you're nothing these days, right? So there's that out there for HPC workloads. R very cool stuff. If you wanna see where we're at, yeah, you're here right now. Wednesday at 2.30, we're gonna, uh, one of my colleagues, Braulio Dumba, is gonna be showing some, uh, some performance evaluation Stuff that he's done in combination with Kubesteller was very important for us to get our performance metrics right. And then we'll have on Wednesday at 4.30, there'll be a deep dive on the Cornell 
integration. You don't want to miss that. That's really exciting stuff. Learn how cows are hooked up to computers. It's fascinating. And then I'll be at the, the IBM booth Wednesday at 6.30 to give a talk similar to this. And then at the Project Pavilion, I'll be in 2A, and I'll be marauding that Pavilion stage as many times as I can to show you a live demo. All right? So that's all for us. Thanks for joining. <laughs>